I'm sorry, Andrew Weissman, but if I recall correctly, in 2018, you were per- one of the people who helped write the Mueller report, and you all botched the hell out of that. And never in my wildest dreams would I have thought we would be here. I thought we were better as a country. Oh, yeah. Like, all these sites that have been around for creating videos and all that, like, text um, stock videos, they're done. Once but that's the- like... That's why Canva was one of the first to get into doing AI. What is up, everybody? It's Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe show, the home of Epic Conversations, and I'm the host of Epic Conversations 2020, Best Podcast News Award winner, 2018 Innovation Award winner given out by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. I also co-host and co-produce the only online show in the world for dads and fathers that's sponsored by Dove Men Plus Care. And being part of that team since 2020, we've reached out directly and indirectly to over 400,000 dads, fathers, and male caregivers around the world. And as always, I'd like to say you're blessed, highly favored, a magnet for miracles, and a solution for someone's problem. We are broadcasting live on August 3rd, the first day of August. No, first day. First Saturday in August in 2024. And here in Toronto, we are still going through a very hot, hazy humid at least for the last week or so it's been hot hazy and humid but what am i hearing more than anything else back to school now in canada where it's not it's not back to school till september but i I know in the u.s it's either starting the next few weeks or by the end of this month it's back to school so let's enjoy summer as much as we can can we yes let's do that now let's enjoy these two wonderful ladies Aisha K. Staggers, Laura Lala Key. What is going on, ladies? Busy, busy week. Very. You know, busy, about school starting. You know, it's a, that's always been regional, though, in the United States. Okay. Because, like, here in, in New England, well, now they start at, the like, the last week of August. But okay. prior to that, we didn't go back to school until after Labor Day. Yeah. Well, that's still up here where I am. Uh, Lala? I was seven years old. I have no idea. What I, I knew, I knew no. you were going to say that. South always went back earlier than we did. Because oh, my wow. cousins, when they were you know, were living down there, they would always start back earlier. But I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that our school buildings are very, very old. They're not yes. being renovated. They don't have the AC, HVAC. Uh, yeah. Room to properly filter, like they were closing schools throughout Arizona, Nevada, Colorado area, because the temperatures were just so hot back in May. And so that's also part of the problem is that our school buildings are just so antiquated. The majority of the schools in the United States are over 50 years old. Yeah. And you know what I, I think about it too, when I see schools that they, a lot of them don't have air conditioning. No, <laughs> like I'm going. Oh my goodness! Like no, and you got to remember, schools that were built 50 years ago, climate was very different 50 years ago. So there's not that um, they aren't doing that kind of uh, renovation. And those renovation. renovations cost money, and where are they going to get the money from? The, the yeah. Congress doesn't want to give them the money, and they rate they largely raise their money from local taxes and if you live in a district where you know the income from local taxes is very low then you're not going to have the funding for example you know i'm from a a large metropolitan city in one of the small states in the country but the other side of it is that the majority of the property that is owned is owned by yale which makes it non-taxable it's tax-free so they're not generating that kind of revenue to um revamp all these schools and you know they just did a whole what in the early 2000s and like yeah for the first 10 years they did they renovated just about every school in the city but now all those schools are 20 years old and need updates themselves so it's a vicious cycle mm. wow mm. uh as we do our appetizer anyone watching the olympics yes no, i haven't watched anything i've been I've just been um, doing a lot of reading and trying to do as much, well, figure out how I can volunteer in this election cycle. So I haven't really done 
Okay. I have, and I have been so proud of our athletes, and it's been amazing just watching Simone Biles just makes me happy. Um, I'm really excited about gymnastics just because it was something that I used to watch with my mom all the time. So every time they do that, I feel, you know, I lost my mom when I was 21. So um, I make sure that I watch that every time that it's on. And I'm just so proud of our team. It's doing well. Shakari Richardson finished second in the 100 meters, did not win, even though her two main Jamaican competitors were not in the race. One of them was she Shelly, I can't. One of them did drop out of the semifinals, and there's some controversy why that happened. And then another one of competitors dropped, said she wasn't going to be in the Olympics because she injured her Achilles tendon, I think, about a month or two ago. So everyone thought, this is Shakari. She's got it all. She doesn't, and she lost. So. I'm surprised. But, but you so know, what, though, is it really a loss? Loss? I mean, it a loss is not meddling at all. Yeah. yeah, but but Shikari, well, she's toned it down now, but she had such a hype train, right? She did. And but you know what? I think you have to sometimes at that point. I mean, you do. There is a fine line to being conceited and there's a fine line to being, you know, pumping yourself up. I, I don't see her as being conceited. I see her as really pushing forward and just, you know, like she has to hype herself up that way. She is fantastic. Yeah. And, and I, I agree because, you know, they said, they said the same thing about Simone Biles. It seems that the conversation is always that it's the black athletes that they say these things about, um, not anyone else. Um, but, you know, when Michael Phelps is out there talking about he's the best swimmer in history, no one said anything about it. Even when he was getting high, no one said anything about it, right? But um, you got this women's basketball team out here. Instead of saying how great Asia Wilson is and some of these other women, they're talking about how can, how can Caitlin Clark didn't make the Olympic team? She didn't, okay? And I'm sorry, with all those daggone turnovers that she has every game, she doesn't deserve to make the team. And so the fact that people are hyping up, are, are you know, people are like, oh, well, you know, she's she's cocky, she's arrogant. Name me a sports figure, specifically a male sports figure, who is not. Mm -hmm. When you can tell me that, then we'll have this conversation about how women, right. specifically black women, should behave in sports. Right. I agree. I mean, there's so much and there's so much also controversy going on uh, with the boxer and all. Yes. This stuff. It's, yes. It's crazy to me. You know, people get in their little boxes and they don't like to live outside of their boxes. And this lady, she is a woman. And, and J.K. Rowling is foul for using her platform to not only spread it, but double down on spreading something that she's been told and has been proven to be false. Mm -hmm. It is horrible. It is terrible that they're doing this. And yeah. So my thing is, yeah. she's worked so hard to be where she is. She's probably lived with being bullied all her life about the way she looks or whatever. And now it's on a world platform. And to me, that is just sickening to my heart. Yeah. And they were talking about it on the, on, um, like I said, in Urban View yesterday, they were talking about this specifically. That woman came from Algeria. Which yeah. You don't know where it is. It's in Northern Africa. Um, and she comes from a country where being LGBTQ can be not just a criminal offense, but a, but a yeah. mortal offense. Yeah. And so by spreading something that's not true about her, they're making the conditions for her return home to be very unsafe. Okay. Well, some people saying hello. Ryan says all male sports figures are arrogant. It's like exactly. they think it's part of the job description. And of course, number one fan, Jen Meyer says, hello, everybody. Good I stuff, do. good stuff, good stuff. Anything else you want to discuss in the appetizer? Because we got more than enough. It's no. a lot going on. That's all I got to say. I'll, I'll oh, get to make sure that you protect your peace. Because, see, it's really easy to lose yourself. 
yeah. when it comes to these elections. And to be very honest, you need to protect your peace. And that's yes. exactly what I'm doing this weekend. I pretty much shut off everything this weekend. Um, I'll check in once or twice, prepare for the show. Uh, but other than that, I had a lovely day with my husband and I'm not going to let this stuff get to me because people are angry and people just say anything they want. And guess what? In, in Tomorrow can, is not promised. I'm going to enjoy my day. OK, yeah, I agree. I um, it part of protecting your peace is knowing when to to do things that for you are non-negotiable, like for me non-negotiable things are things that give me joy. So honestly, turning off the news, sometimes you have to. The news cycle moves as fast as we let it move. Let's yeah. be very, very honest that viewers, audiences, we are consumers, we actually drive the cycle. If we slow it down, the cycle will automatically slow down. For me, I just, you know, I, I like to go back and watch classic TV series and try to, you know, shows I haven't seen in, in years and go sit back and watch those instead of sitting and watching the news because it allows me to take, take a breather, but also too, you get to relish in a time when things moved a little bit slower than they do now. And for that, you know, half hour or hour or so, you can just kind of be in the moment and be in that time frame. you know, sitting on the couch, eating popcorn and yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, throughout the week, my evenings were spent sitting on my veranda, enjoying a nice breeze and watching the sunset. I, and I'll, I will probably do that after the show today because the, the sun still doesn't set completely till after nine. Still, I know time's yes, going by. Just good. sit on the veranda and just relax. So let's uh, do, let's get into it. Primetime Saturday with Aisha and Lala at Patreon. There's a link. Primetime Saturday show store. There's the link. Any updates on merchandise, especially from Lala? Because yeah, you know, yeah. last time you were on, you know, I gave Aisha the link. <laughs> okay. Good. And also, too, we got to talk about the Patreon. We rebranded Primetime 10 and 10 to Girlfriends Chat with Aisha and Lala. Okay. Um, Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And uh, we, we're so, we enjoy it so much. So it's more of a, just conversation between girlfriends and friends and yeah. Nice. nice. All right. And don't forget Jill Jones will be joining us this Wednesday. So. Yeah. yeah. Jill Jones, if you've been around a while, you'll remember she was yes. with us and she's coming back on uh, the girlfriends chat. Also the discord group, please email me at dr period V I B E at the dr V I B E S H O W. If you want to be part of the discord group, subscribe to the Dr. Vibe show. Excuse me, on YouTube and hit notification button because our next goal is 1,600 subscribers. We smashed through 1,500. 1,600 is next. Also, follow me on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And if you want to advertise your business product or service on the platform, email me. And also, too, mentioning Dr. Chachi, who filled in wonderfully two and a half hours worth wonderfully last yeah. week. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. And we have some trolls too. <laughs> Look at Lala's face. Ooh. Wait. Oh. Yeah. And we had to, we could have went longer, but Dr. Tachi, the driving force behind Indie Suit Media, Indie Suit Media TV, where replays of this conversation and others that I'm part of are rebroadcast again six months in. 15,000, almost up to 16,000 subscribers. And I'm also a member of the advisory board. So check out this content and other independent content creators content on that platform. All right, family, let's talk about it. 45 at the National Association of Black Journalists Conference. What? Yeah, let's <laughs> well, well some people... you know, go ahead. I'm a former member of NABJ. Um, I didn't like how this whole setup happened because, you know, in my research on how this conversation became to be was that, first of all, he turned them down twice. Mm -hmm. He turned them down twice. And um, he only accepted after Kamala was the nominee. And the thought, because you, you have to remember, 
he thinks like a six year old. And yeah. he just it and, and, and he has he doesn't have any thinking that has nuance or you know context. It's just like, oh, well, there's now a black candidate running against me. She's gonna take my black votes. So I have to go to this black venue. I don't really want to go and just show black people that that um you know I'm here. I'm and, he, and then they and they invited her. The reason that she didn't show up on the date that they gave her was because Sheila Jackson Lee died and she was giving the eulogy. That was why she didn't show up, not because she didn't she didn't want to be in that in that space. She said there's a scheduling conflict. I was I'm due to give this eulogy. And I'm sorry, honestly you would think that they would have been less incensed at the fact that here she is called to eulogize one of the great black leaders that many of them covered in the first place but they were angry and i think that's why they went to trump a third time and now once they got him it started almost an hour late and the reason it started an hour late was they said oh there were sound there were sound technical difficulties etc cetera, etc cetera. that's what trump trump's people yeah. were NABJ did a whole quick to job. Say that, but you know it's yeah. wrong in the first place. When he Wait, jumps to something quick like that, you know it's a lie. But see, NABJ was horrible for waiting almost a week before they came out and said, no, actually the problem was, was that his people wanted to um, give us questions to ask him. They wanted, they wanted to have approval over everything. And we weren't going to let them. So the reason it started almost an hour late was because of back and forth at the last minute from mm -hmm. Trump's people with the um, the host and the um, event planners. And so when he gets on there, now mind you, this first black woman, the woman in the blue suit from ABC News, he shook her. She shook his hand. He, she shook every, everybody. Shook his hand. So I don't understand what his complaint about her saying, well, she didn't say to me, hi, sir, how are you doing? Nice to have you here. Um, she shook your hand. That implied, hi, how are you? Now let's get to the question. You weren't there. To ego, you weren't there to have your ego stroked. You were there to tell the black community why they should consider you because these black journalists were going to go back and write articles for black people to tell black people where he stood on the issues. The problem is there are no issues that you stand on, especially none that support black people. Kamala Harris actually has a record in the Biden administration of over a hundred executive orders that directly impact and were specifically for black people. So yeah. the whole point of him being there was just to show face. But then he also was going to, there was supposed to, the um, Harris Faulkner wasn't the Fox News reporter that was supposed to be there on the stage with him. It was supposed to be the man that's on Fox and Friends, but they brought Harris Faulkner. Um, again, we talked about this in the pre-show, but Harris Faulkner should not have been there because she's not an NABJ member. It should have only been Black media who are members. That's the first thing. The second thing, um, the woman from ABC was asking very, very pertinent questions. He didn't want to answer that question. That's what it was, that first question, why should Black voters vote for you? Yeah, yeah. And when he doesn't have an answer for anything, because here's the thing, the man touts himself as the best president for black people since Abraham Lincoln, but yeah. he can't say one thing that he's done. He said that he saved black, co black colleges, that he can't say one thing that he's done. As a matter of fact, that bill that he says that was his was actually written by Kamala Harris <laughs> and some other people. So the thing is, is that he, can't stand on business because he has no business on which to stand. And the problem for, um, you know, it, it, the problem that we have as journalists is do we platform this crap or not? And uh, on one hand, I see white journalists who say, well, no, we need to be reminded of what Trump does and what he looks like and how mean and nasty he can be. You do that on your forum, as far as I'm yeah, concerned. Why do we got to do it on ours? Why are you asking black people to endure this 
this trauma inducing experience so that you all can see this man differently. I, I that to me is that to me is wrong. And I think that I think that he there were a lot of things that he said that were blasphemous, but the question but the but here's the point. When does he never not say anything that's blasphemous? He everything that comes out of his mouth is blasphemous, boisterous, it's big, it's brash because yeah. You're, he's trying to hide a very little mind. So the talk is big, but he's lo he's low and small on the thinking part of it. And I just think that um, the National Association of Black Journalists got played. I'm glad I did not renew my membership this year. Um, they played right into his hands. They did. They did. And I think the how it came... Um, was ridiculous. And I applaud um, the uh, woman who was the member um, of the board who stepped down and was like, I'm, I'm out of here because this is ridiculous. I just think it was a circus. We knew that his true character always shines through. He never has hide his hidden his true character. Uh, the, the, you know, he cannot handle the tough questions. This is why he always wants to demand things that he wants. He wants Fox News. He wants this reporter. He doesn't want to be fact checked. He doesn't want to be. Then you're just nothing but an empty mouthpiece spewing hate. You had you didn't come there with the right intentions. You have no right intentions for our community. None at all. And you are just showing the act that you are. And I'm not mad at how these ladies came out and just reamed him for the questions that needed to be asked. And of course, he didn't answer them. And you can see that his passive aggressiveness was so very clear. Now, I know that there's been like a lot of analysis with the water bottle and all that stuff. And I think that's a little going beyond things. But there was something really strange about that, too. I mean, we knew he had his own water bottle. So what was like, what was that all about? I mean, it was just like he was trying, like he tightened it like as, 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 as it was an aggression. He does not like to be questioned by anyone, but especially black women. And it showed. Yeah. And All right. Know, the other part of it too, though, with with this that we have to say, and, and say it boldly. And I saw the the woman that was in the middle. I've seen her on some of the on some different shows talking. And I think that she, what she's basically doing, she's basically doing an apology tour now, because um, I think people are giving her and Harris Faulkner more credit. It was the ABC reporter that stood up to him. It was it there. It wasn't all three of them. There was one. Because it was the one that he was the most hostile to. That's how you know that she wasn't lowballing anything. And let's be clear, this impacts the debate too. The reason that there are two reasons he's not showing up to that debate. One, he doesn't want to be, he does not want to have to go toe to toe with Kamala Harris because Kamala's ready for him. Okay. You know, and he will go open on him. He's not ready for that kind of street fight, right? Even though he's from Queens. But beyond that, the it, it's not lost on me that this debate was supposed to be on ABC. And after how he just behaved with an ABC reporter at MABJ, he didn't want to take the chance that the um, that the moderator that they would assign would be that woman, the woman he called to that woman, her. Yeah. He didn't want to take the chance that it could be her and she'd yeah. have round two to go at him. And there would be constraints on him at that point because they agreed to certain rules. And okay. so notice he always wants to always defer to Fox. Yeah. Because he feels like that's his best battleground. Okay. Lots of comments to come up to bring up here. And I want to go a little bit deeper into this conversation. Fitness IQ Cam says, good evening, ladies and gents. Have no fear. Dr. Tati's here. Happy Saturday. Regina Ferris says, good evening, Dr. Tachi. I know you can, and Dr. Tachi goes, hey there. And she goes, Tachi, sorry. And then Dr. Tachi says, and that's when you say, no, thank you. We don't need right. you, Dr. Tachi. Right. Says. We don't need him. Mm -mm. Uh, no. Dr. Tachi says, Regina Ferris, no worries. And uh, Regina says, exactly. Uh, Dr. Tachi says, that was a tactic to Saul saying she didn't say hello. 
Regina says, I hope the two billion, I hope the two billion to black farmers comes up at some point and the positive impact of Queen Sugar on that quote apology, unquote. Regina goes, 45 is a waste of air. He has done nothing, will do nothing, has never done anything except be racist and hostile. Dr. Tachi says, I agree to Regina's comment. Dr. Tachi says, his presence at NABJ was unnecessary. I knew there was a reason I didn't join. She says, join. Uh, Regina goes, I deliberately trolled Fox site after that interview to screw with MAGA commentators. It felt good. <laughs> she then says, he used much of the same behavior pattern at the first debate. Lied, blank stirred, and refused to answer questions. Regina mm -hmm. says 45 insulted ABC right out of the gate as an excuse to drop out of the ABC debate. He did. And, and, and you know, it, here, here's the other part of it too, right? It, is that he thought that with Harris Faulkner there, um, she would get to ask him all the questions. Yeah. And she would get to ask favorable questions. The problem is, is that he he just thought that he could come and this goes back to his thinking about black people and not think, and thinking that black people were not very smart right well, is that he thought that he could just ramble out a few um talking points and keywords and phrases that he normally does and that that would be enough because this is what happens when you have someone who only talks in sound bites they can't analyze anything. They can't give a coded response, a full, a full interpretable response. And it's funny to me too because at his event today, he's talking about how Kamala Harris can't um, can't speak without speaking. She can't speak well. She can't speak. She struggles. She can't speak without a teleprompter and has to give you know. And I'm like, okay, so basically, all you did was substitute Joe Biden with Kamala Harris because that is the exact same thing you were saying about him. But when you speak without a teleprompter. You descend into so this, um, in, into this cycle of crazy, crazy. And word salads that you know words that don't make any sense. It's like you just strung a bunch of words together. He talked when he was saying about when he said the thing about black jobs, and they asked him what is a black job. It was like we'll oh, get I to that. Know. We want to talk about that in a few moments. But it was like oh, I never had to answer a question. I never had to answer for it. I could just well, see. Think. Here's the thing: he never, he never listens to the questions. He doesn't give what they're asking him. He just repeats the same thing. I've been the best president for black people. I just, I, in the end, since Abraham Lincoln, and he is. And that's all that he says. He hasn't shown a record. He hasn't shown any proof. He hasn't shown anything at all to back up what he's saying. He's just spitting rhetoric over and over we all can say it every time he comes on we all can say it because it's a puppet we know exactly what he's going to say and how he's going to say it because he doesn't have anything uh really good at all to say about himself other than he wants to be president so that he can be dictator and he doesn't give a about anybody else well, here's the other part, too. I think the only book he ever read in his life is this book called The Art of Subliminal Seduction or something like that. But I read, we had to read it when I was in college in advertising class. It was written in like the 70s. It basically tells you things, all the things that he does. Like if you repeat something at least three times, six is preferable. But if you repeat something at least three times, people will then remember it. Yeah. Yeah. And all so right. all those things that he does came literally come from that book. I think that's like the only book he's ever read. All right. We got some more comments as always. And uh, Dr. Chats to say for NABJ leadership to sit by and allow black women journalists to be denigrated. Um, Regina says something. They needed Will Smith on the panel. Did they? I don't know why. Uh, Regina said, uh, Dr. Chats says, Regina oh. To serve up some healthy no, to serve up some healthy slops. Okay. And Regina goes, uh-huh. So R Regina and Dr. Tachi got their own thing going on tonight. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. April says he didn't want to fact check, but blaming it on audio. Yeah. This 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 thus should still done it. Okay. Whatever. They should have still done it. And they, yeah. they did do fact checking in con in partnership with PolitiFact, but PolitiFact was fact-checking on Twitter. 
And right. that's the problem. There was no stream, like no, yes. you know, there's no Chiron at the bottom streaming the 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 um things. But that's also because remember this was a live event. It wasn't aired anywhere really. It was it was live at a venue. And so I, I think that um that's that's why I think the other two reporters were useless. They should have had someone there to fact check. What but then let's also talk about this. Let's I mean this it has to be mentioned that that a must is throttling anything that doesn't look good for Trump. Okay. All right. So let's I just want to reach out and say welcome Kay. I know who Kay is. Good to have you. And let us never forget he tried to smear all black people with his lie. The event started late because black yep. people were not prepared. 45 was late, she says. And, and the part of it is, is that he said that to the journalist from ABC. We started late because you're, no, it wasn't their fault. It was your fault. You did not want to agree to being fact checked. You did not want to agree to them answer, asking their own questions that you did not know beforehand, period. All right. You got to remember when he goes on Fox, they don't just give him soft questions. He gets the questions beforehand so he can practice answers. All right. Regina says, the art of subliminal yeah, seduction. We read that in journalism school in 1978. I read it 20 years later. So okay. like less than 20 years later. So yeah. Dr. Chad says, this actually shows that NABJ leadership is only interested in clout. This has yeah. put a significant strain, strain on the organization. Regina yeah, Ferris says the audience should have done more than moan at his BS. Boo. Well, All right. Honestly, they should, they should have walked out. These are, journal, these are journalists, a lot of them who have been disrespected by him. I think that they should have went should have walked out. But the other side of it too is that they also need to be there to bear witness so that when people did say, did this happen, they can say, yes, I was there in the room. Ladies, do you want to go through five moments that from him going off the rails or not? Going sure. Sure. We okay. can't, we can. I'm trying to want, I'm trying to think if if it's going to make any difference because it's his it's his greatest hits. <laughs> hey, we just lost Lala for a moment. I know she'll be back. Well, let's do it. Let's run down his top five because it's the same top five no matter where he goes. Okay, so this is an article from Ax Axios, uh, and so it's titled Five Explosive Moments from 45's Off the Rails NABJ Interview." Number one. 45 attacks Harris over her race. 45 Let's talk about that last. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. He said he would, quote, absolutely, unquote, pardon January 6 riders. 45 reaffirmed he said that, before. <laughs> that he would pardon those convicted in January yeah. 6 attack, saying, quote, if they're innocent, I would pardon them, unquote. Yeah, the there's really no need to go into what he said, actually, because he's said this before. We've covered it before. He said this before. The only thing that was different in this particular circumstance is that he said, well, you know, uh, they didn't they didn't jail anybody who participated in riots during the um, during, you know, during 2020. Let's be very clear that um, there were not a lot of there were not a lot of riots. A lot, oftentimes they found that the people that came in and caused trouble were Trump people that came in and caused trouble, but also too, they did arrest people. He said no one died on January 6th. Um, doesn't he um, Doesn't he um, hustle on that one woman actually about it all the time? She died on that day. Um, yeah. And then also too, he's brought in these recent this recent riot that happened in DC. Um, but, you know, that had absolutely nothing to do with this. Those people were already protesting. It was peaceful and they got into this, this row with um, police, but they did not try to stop an election, the, um, the counting of votes for an election. They did yeah. not try to stop the natural order of business. They were not, and, and let's be very clear. Remember how quickly the police got to those people and think about how long it took. January 6th rioters had to disperse on their own. The police ended that that um, that uh, incident that happened recently. So it, it, it's just nonsense on that part. 
on that okay. one. So. so so we've got Lala back. Yeah, he's saying, they say, this article says, what he's saying, ask about the videos from that day that depict officers who responded to the attack being beaten and dragged down the stairs of the Capitol. 45 said, quote, they shot a young lady in the face who was protesting, unquote, referring to the deadly shooting of Ashley Babbitt. 45 then falsely claimed that, quote, no one died, unquote, right after the referencing Babbitt's shooting. Right, which I also echoed, just said, yeah. He also echoed a conspiracy theory about the Capitol attack, saying officers were, quote, ushering, riot, unquote, rioters into the building. Okay. All right. Next, another one. 45 downplays VP importance in the wake of Vance criticism. Um, again, he basically said that he chose the union. Yeah. I'm I mean, sorry. I'm so okay. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> basically, he just said that, um, well, J.D. Vance isn't that important. Dude, that's the person that if you eat one too many hamburgers, your arteries will clog up and you roll over and die. It's supposed to take over. You know, um, so that is that is something that you will be judged on because guess who was judged on their VP pick? John McCain. Yeah. John McCain. John McCain um, lost as big as he lost in part because of his VP pick. No one felt comfortable letting that woman be second in line. And but no. not only that, within his own party, the racism is rampant. They do not want this man in there because he is married to a non-white woman. And another thing, the fact that he can't protect or even de defend as a husband his wife the way that he reacts. Well, she's a good mother. You know, that's pretty disgusting. And so for us uh, women, we think that that's absolutely ridiculous. But for the racists in the party, the true true MAGA of the party, um, they're not going to accept Vance because of his wife. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that, that that's the bottom line. I mean, that's why he also has to downplay it. Um, and he's also downplaying it. He was also downplaying it then at that moment because he wasn't clear who Kyla was choosing. You got to remember her choices all of her choices were like years, years, years better than what he chose. And okay. and, and the other, the last reason I'll say why he downplayed the importance of J.D. Vance, and we talked about this last week with Dr. Tachi, was that J.D. Vance was not his first pick. J.D. Vance was the pick of Carlson Tucker and um, Don Jr., and it's turned out to be a bit of an embarrassment for Trump because now people are laughing at him and calling him weird. They're calling, they started by calling JD Vance weird, and now the weird moniker is sticking to Trump. And if there's anything that he hates, and he said it himself, the thing that he hates the most is to be laughed at. And when people well, were making the memes about JD Vance and the couches, people were laughing at Trump. But I'm <laughs> curious to know why those people pushed Vance. Out of all the picks, why on earth did those people demand that Vance be the pick? Because on a policy issue, on policy issues, the Project 2025 policy issues, he was in sync with the Heritage Foundation. Well, we see how that's turned Remember, out. As much as they keep trying to downplay Project 2025, it's still their platform. It's still their platform. Okay. And Vance would unapologetically push it, and so that's why. So just in regards to some comments here from the article, VP importance, uh, he contended after, he can, 45 contended after, quote, two or three days, unquote, the excitement over a running mate dies down. And it's all about, quote, all about the presidential pick. He doubled down, reiterating the choice makes, quote, no difference, unquote. He said he thinks J.D. Vance is, quote, outstanding, unquote, but added, quote, you're voting for me, unquote. Yes, allies of the former president hope the Rust Belt native would bolster the former president's support in key swing states. Next up, he gives little detail on police immunity proposal. I think we chatted about this last week, but he 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 went in on this saying, you know, the former president said the officer who killed Sonia Massey, an unarmed 36-year-old woman who was fatally shot in her home in Illinois after calling 911 earlier in July, quote, 
might not, unquote, receive immunity when asked about his campaign proposal to give police officers immunity from prosecution. He you said, know, I don't Lie. Let me just say, no, I, think, I don't think we should spend a whole lot of time on this particular one because the, the bottom line, this Axios pointed out that this is one of the big things that came out. It was big, but on the, on the other hand, it wasn't because one, he had no idea who Sonia Massey was. No, he did not. Happened to her. He just heard immune, the word immunity, period, and, and knows that he's getting immunity for certain things and that the Supreme Court did that. He has no, he has, he has no knowledge about what police immunity is either. And, and for them, to, so you gotta remember when they said those words, police immunity, he doesn't know what that phrase means any more than he knew what DEI meant. And so to, we don't even really need to spend a whole lot of time on that because the bottom line is that he answered a question he did not understand. Let's continue on in this article. Um, he said they do say 45 did not get any concrete outline of how the proposal would work. 45 lost previous election in 2020 against President Biden months after historic anti-racism process sprung up upon the Mississippi police killing of George Floyd. When asked about the details of his pledge, he said, quote, there's a big difference between being a bad person and making an innocent mistake. But if somebody made an innocent mistake, I would want to help that person, unquote. And then he said, he said, sometimes, quote, very bad decisions, unquote, are made, but fr but not from an, quote, evil standpoint, unquote. So another thing he said, good old black jobs. <laughs> I'm tired of him. <laughs> well, guess what? I love the fact that Simone Biles said she loves her black job. Yeah, we got we 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 get we got good clapbacks for that. I'm sorry, that's exactly what that is, Doctor. And, and then he, he doubled down on it again, and and I'm you know I'm glad someone asked him what was a black job, but again, that's why he was further insulted by this woman because he was like, um, I'm just supposed to be allowed to say black jobs, and you move on to something else, but you're not supposed to ask me what I mean by that. And the fact that she asked him. He was like, I it, the look on his face. I don't have an answer for this. So he said, it's a black job that anybody works. It's a job that anybody works. Well, then you mean just a job job, right? Well, he did say, when asked that question during the NABJ, says, "quote A black job is anyone that has a job." Unquote. He said, "A quote, job job." Because remember, he said anyone. He didn't say anyone black. He said anyone. So basically. So white people have black jobs? Is that what you're saying? Because that's the other part that was a disappointment to me was that no one followed up on that question. When he Once he said that real journalists, really good journalists, stop and go, wait a second. So you're saying anybody that has a black job. So are you saying that white people have black jobs? And then what specifically are those black jobs? Because the point is to get him to say what he really means, and he needs low-wage jobs. He said, quote, he, he, wants us. He, he said, quote, they're taking employment away from black people, unquote. He basically claimed of migrants. The other side, Biden slammed 45 over the comment earlier this month, saying to a crowd at an NAACP event, folks, I know what a black job is. It's vice president of the United States. Right. So that's a little bit of a breakdown of that event. But, uh, that, um, but that particular um, one about the, the the quote, see, that's one part that's, a, I love Axios, but on, sometimes they get things wrong. The order that they should put, put that last part about the black jobs in was wrong. Because at first he said they're coming over and they're taking jobs. Yeah, um, from black people. Then he made the black jobs comment. That's why it was so stark. Um, but going back to we, I said let's go back to that first thing about trying to race um, about the race of Kamala Harris. I have said this on Discord. I've said it to Lala, I, and I'll say it to anyone who listens. He got the idea to do that from Nikki Haley. That was a Nikki yeah. Haley um, manufacturing point because. All she had to do was think about the very thing that people say about her in politics that pissed her off more than anything. Because Trump is not this is not that smart, and neither are the people around him 
that smart about race and nuance nuances of race to come craft um anything other than oh we'll just throw dei at her like right we'll just throw woke at them crt no they don't know how different groups react and interact about race. And so that came from someone, that came from two people. He asked a black person, and I promise you it was Tim Scott. He asked another black person. I mean, he asked an Indian person and I promise you that was Nikki Haley. And then he, and then they made it clear because that's not something that he came up on his own. No. And the part about her, you know, it, it's like he, he, it's bizarre that this man is older, way older, way, way, way older than I am and um, has no concept of how um, mixed heritages work in this country. Yeah. Exactly. And, have, and have work you wait wait a second you are how old and you don't know in this country that that your own people define anybody they see as with brown skin as black Come yeah on. you are you are marking you are marking your application your apartment applications with a c for color so if you knew to call them color you obviously knew some other things not only that your father was at a kkk rally i'm sure he told you all this stuff, because you got to remember, miscegenation is one of the print founding principles of the KKK. Their fear of miscegenation and canceling out the white race. So this is why I don't take him at his, at face value for this. This is why I think that it was a Nikki Haley thing because um, if anybody's going to not show their Indian heritage, we're gonna know it's Nikki Haley. Um, but also, too, he didn't want to be fact checked because he wanted to be able to say that and no one come back at him. She went to Howard. She's an AKA, um, you know, whatever. But also, too, they didn't do it at the moment because they probably didn't have the information. But also, too, in her book, she talks about her mother raising her and her sister as black children because she knew the world would see them as black children. Whoa. So... It's a pointless, it's a pointless thing on his part to say that, oh, she just turned, she turned black. No. And also to me, well, by the way, took and ran with, have y'all seen the Twitter threads about the day that you discovered she was black? Yeah. I mean, the, this is also the, um, that, that, that thing where it, it, it really makes me think that there, that that white people who think like him honestly believe that when we come home, we take we take off our color, yeah, and we're just either clear people or white people when we come home. But we but we decide we make the choice every morning to go out in brown skin like it's a costume, because guess yeah. what? When they do blackface, it is a costume, right? Yeah. And, and they take it off, and so they're like, oh, then they must do this. No, we don't just turn anything and turn it off. I mean, and here's the other thing. If we're going to talk about people turning different colors, um, Trump was white and turned orange. <laughs> Period. That was That's an easy low ball that anybody can throw at him. But beyond yeah. that, I think that this, this conversation over her race is not going to catch fire because, again, Trump does not know things. Trump is still living like it's 1985 and he's as popular as he was then and likable and that he even looks the same way that he did then. But he doesn't realize that, no, here we are in, in the year of 2024, the majority of children under 21 are at least one, at least one color, a minority color or are mixed. So they're, they're children of color and a lot of them are, are multiracial. So this doesn't bother them. You gotta remember those 21, those 18 to 21 year olds in that group, they vote. Yeah. They vote. All right, 
before we go to a break, we have a pile of comments to catch up on. So let's get through them before break time. First of all, doctor says to Regina, Regina says they should have turned their backs on him at the NABJ event. And Regina goes, ooh, that's an interesting solution. The narcissist would have foamed at the mouth. But he almost did because remember he said something. I can't remember what it was, but there was something that he said and they laughed at him. Yeah. And he, and he just looked up like. Yeah. Like, he doesn't know how to handle that. All right. Yeah. Dr. Tazi says to Regina, yes, this way they are still in the room and it's the and it is the ultimate disrespect. Regina says it would also symbolize unity in the block voting block against him. Be gone, traitor. Uh, April Watson goes, I want Roland Martin to go off on him in an interview. That's not going to happen. He's not going to. It'll never happen. He'll never do an interview with Roland Martin. Believe it or not, Roland Martin was in the front row of that event. And he and many times he said, you're lying. You're lying. And NAG, NABJ staff said, you got to keep quiet. You can't go on like that. So they, yeah, they almost threw him out. Yes. Um, Regina goes, can, can 45 still drop Vance? McCain sank like a stone after he picked Palin. He can still drop, he can still drop him, but he won't. The thing is, the thing of it is, is that he doesn't like to admit being wrong. Wrong. No. Okay. So there we Dropping go. Dropping J.D. Vance would be an admission that he made the wrong choice. Uh, Regina says he claimed not to know much about Sonia Massey, Massey which is deplicable, frankly. Despicable. But you know, here's the thing, though. Why would we expect him to? Yeah. I'm uh, not. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's, think it's so much that it's despicable. I think it's right on brand for him because guess what? This man doesn't know things. Well, <laughs> he, uh, he knows nothing. And I don't think his base would want him to really acknowledge that. So, well, as it is, they're already trying. They're already probably raising money for um for the guy that shot her for his defense, yeah. just like they did Kyle Rittenhouse and all these other people. Which you so, said he's not voting for Trump. Y'all heard that, right? Who? Kyle Rittenhouse came out and everybody was stopping him because he said he's not voting for Trump. Ooh. Well, probably because probably because he didn't get that job. That white job that he wanted. Exactly. Oh my. He said that he that we need a he, we need a true leader or something like that. And he came out and said he is not voting for Trump. Okay. Dr. Chachi says, listen, they are asking for critical reasoning skills from a jackal. It's an impossible task. Right. Dr. Chachi says, in my opinion, those were not the journalists to have on stage. There are correspondents who are not used to constant barrage, say like a joy read. Yeah. Uh, next up, Regina says, now we all know that Biden checked out during the, why Biden checked out the first debate? He was probably thinking, not this lying fool again. Same, Regina, the same yeah. stuff. <laughs> Joey Reed said, yes, Joey, he, he would have, Reed would have held him accountable. Ryan says, yeah, 45 yeah. trying to attack physical appearance in general never made sense to me. Yeah. Mark says, Exactly. Dr. Chatsy says he would have never admit making a bad choice exactly. And yes, Kay says Rittenhouse flip-flopped. So I mean, I mean they Dr. even tried to call him out on donating to her campaign, but um but uh he tried to make he make mince meat of that too. And they really just stayed on that point. Like you said, um, like was said earlier, those the one from ABC was fine. It was the other two who were useless. Yeah. Okay. And then Dr. Chai says, yes, to Ryan says, exactly. Looking like a pile of yeast rolls. <laughs> oh, gosh. Talk, Dr. Tachi. And you say you don't talk about politics enough? You should. You should be on here as much as you can because we like Oh, like that. me and my sisters, we call it, we say that somebody's break, baking bread in the middle. Oh, my. <laughs> but but what, I have one other question, though. Why wasn't there a black male journalist on there? I know you talked about them, but it just to me was. I think it was very specific because they were trying to give the appearance of um, what it would look like if he debated Kamala Harris. I, 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 I'm not 100% comfortable not having a, a black male journalist on there because it makes it look like where's the black male representation? It's like. But that's a whole other conversation. But that was probably a, that was, but no. Remember, they had one initially scheduled. Yeah, but could they find another yeah. one? 
Mm -hmm. But I don't think that was a. Re I don't think the purpose was for that representation. Yeah. I think the purpose right. was specifically the dichotomy of how it would look him going up against three black women because they know. Here's the thing: he would schmooze. He would try to schmooze a black man, and then he would try even even if the black man was holding him accountable, he would try to relate to him as men. People know that he he has specific vitriol for black women. And I think that was the reason behind, particularly black female journalists. If you go back and you watch all of his tapes of his White House, um, his White House press briefings, when there were even black male journalists, he showed them a kind of different respect that he did yeah. not show the black female journalists. So I believe that was the decision that was made by NABJ. Okay, Regina goes out to Dr. Tachi's yeast. And April goes, y'all, how did the ear look? Um, it looked fine. Hmm. <laughs> it looked fine. It look, it looked fine for somebody that got hit with like with like a sh shrapnel a couple weeks ago. He's still trying to say that it was a bullet. No, because here's the thing, because the FBI, Chris Ray said he wasn't sure it was a bullet so much, maybe shrapnel or broken bits of a bullet. But what Trump tried to say was, no, it was a bullet, a, bu a bu shrapnel, um, broken bits of a bullet are still a bullet. I'm sorry. I think that the um, parents of the Newtown children would beg to differ. All right. Dr. Chachi says there should have been a black male journalist. Yeah, I'm not for NABJ at this point. There are other yeah. organizations that are more my speed. Regina says, don't know. Look like he went from a sanitary napkin to a band -aid. Not even a band -aid. Oh, boy. And then we have Fitness IQ Cam says, mm hmm, all right. So we've uh, going to come to a little bit, right? Because I knew this would be fun first part of the conversation. So we're going to take a quick, quick break. Only 30 seconds, family. But you know what? We got some new 30-second stuff to show you. So we'll be back in 30 seconds, and then we'll talk about Kamala Harris's agenda because people say, what does she stand for? So let's be back in 30 seconds and we'll continue the epic conversation on Pride Time Saturday. Prime Time Saturday with Aisha and Lala. Join Aisha K. Staggers and Laura Lala Key as they cut through the chaos and make some sense of the nonsense in American news and politics. People are expecting Obama level eloquence out of a man who's always talked like this. Sharp insights, bold opinions, and a touch of humor. It's the show that keeps you informed and entertained. There's no way that Trump is going to debate her. Don't miss Primetime Saturday with Aisha and Lala. Tune in and stay ahead of the headlines. Told you it was quick. I did, I did I pick? Did I pick? Uh -huh. What? Hey, he is not going to debate her. He's scared. <laughs> All right. So there we go. So quick little break. Let's continue on. Kamala Harris's platform. What is it? She's got a lot. She's got a lot of things that she's talking about. One of the things that she wants to definitely do is continue with the um, loan forgiveness for students. She wants to expand the cutting of costs for prescription drugs. She also wants to cap um, uh, unfair um, rent hikes. That's yeah. one of the things that I think that. A lot of people, not just on the left, but on the right, could get behind, especially especially if you are a parent of an adult child who lives at home because they can't afford to get um, an apartment on their own. She also wants to expand what they did with the um, unfair banking fees mm -hmm. and the credit card fees. They want to be able to expand that. Um, of course, they, she wants to um, redo. Um, she wants to put row. It codify Roe. Um, she wants to do sensible gun violence checks that we couldn't get done before. But the thing that people that really should stand out to people, and she said this very much in her speech in Atlanta, was that she wants to deal with the price gouging. The reason she said, yes, the economy is recovering, but she didn't, she pivoted in a way that we kept asking Joe Biden to, and he just didn't. But because I think that the economy was. It, it, it was his issue, you know, um, but like she said, the economy, we've had a great recovery. However, the costs are too high. Groceries are too high. And so Rachel. she wants to, right, she wants to work at um, fixing the price gouging, not letting, 
passing legislation that won't let these companies that charge us for goods and services to inflate the prices to the point that we can't we can't afford them because you know yes i understand that when when um salaries grow up we should ex go up we should expect um prices to go up a little bit but not to the point that i don't even see my um pay increase Basically, I literally I'm had a friend this week say she passed on orange juice for the first time because it was eight dollars. This was not in California. This is one of those mid mid city mid uh, state uh, areas, and she said, "I just refuse to pay eight dollars for orange juice. I can't do it." That's crazy, right? And and that literally is price gouging. And you know one of the other things too. She, um, like she said, she will fix. She will fix immigration, but we have to make it very clear and very known that they're going to try and paint her with this brush of immigration. Guess what? Border they already started. They call it a border czar. Exactly. That was the title that they came up with when um, Donald Trump said that he was going to. They came up with that in 2020. So this tells you how they recycle stuff, right? Or they, or they go and they search. What did we call her back then that we can use now? But. The crossings are down. And this is the other reason he doesn't want to bait her because he can't slap her with the immigration thing because the crossings are down. And she will ask him, we had the bill. Why did you tell them right. not to support it? We had the bill. Why did you tell them not to support it? And also, too, that Kamala Harris is a prosecutor and she does better journalism than those some of those women on that stage is that she would have held onto that bone like a dog and not gave it up until he gave up the answer right exactly or at least a non-answer and then to which she would have been like okay so i guess you don't have an answer for that but yeah she i, I mean that is i think where um I think that's where he actually falters a bit is because he does not have a platform. And so they're trying to, people are saying, well, we don't know what her platform is. No, no, it's not that you don't know what her platform is. She has a platform. You can go find it on her campaign website if you if you actually take the time to look. The problem is, is that because he has a platform, people are assuming that she doesn't. And that right. she can't possibly have a platform this quick. But you got to remember, she isn't just adopting Joe Biden's um, Joe Biden's campaign. She's saying all of the things that people are saying. Her platform is what the people want. And people are being critical of that because they can't believe that people want these things. Um, hello? Yeah. For a long time. So but she still backs Biden's a whole on the a whole economic thing. She still supports Biden's investing in America agenda. And if you look at that, you'll see that that includes like the infrastructure investment that we need so badly. In Louisville alone, there are bridges that are so bad right now. I would I'm scared to death to draw drive across them when I go home. She supports the clean energy initiative. She also emphasizes the need for economic policies that support work. Working families, such as child care support, tax credits for the lower income individuals. And she's advocated for the um, wealthy to pay higher taxes, aiming to create more of an economic landscape. She has platforms. People just don't want to hear that she has platforms. Mm hmm. Yeah. And don't forget, though, y'all, people people don't understand. We've, we've gone through the RNC. The RNC has done their thing. We haven't done ours yet. Ours comes right. this month, in the middle of this month. A lot of these questions that people are trying to throw out and act like she doesn't have will be answered at that time. It's our right to wait till that time for our candidate to say what she is standing on. Yeah. And, and the other part of it, too, is that people people feel like, oh, this happened too quickly. So there's no there's all style. There are no substance. But the bottom line is that she is being she is full of substance because all you have to do is watch because not only is she running a campaign, she's still being vice president. Hello. Did you not see her on the tarmac with President Biden? 
as the as those um, hostages were coming home from Russia. Okay, yeah, nobody she wants was, to talk about she that. Right there. Nobody wants to talk about it. But Joe Biden is talking about it. Joe Biden said that she was integral in, in helping with this partnership. Okay, so um, I also think too what will be good is that Joe Biden will be speaking at the um, DNC and he's going to be able to tell exactly what she did in his administration. That's going to be, that is what people need to just, you know, sit on their behinds, have some popcorn and a Coke and be patient. But he's going to tell you everything that she's done and why she's a good candidate. And then Kamala Harris is going to tell you herself what she is going to do. She's been, and, and here's the thing. If you're not watching any, she says this on every platform, what she wants to do. She's, she's brought it down to salient talking points that are very quick. I'm sorry if you don't, if, so wait, so now what people are trying to say is that, um, now you're trying to compare it, her platform to project 2025. That's 900 pages. Really? That's what we're doing. But you say, but at the same, on the same, at the same time, you also want to act like Project 2025 isn't Trump's platform. You can't have it both ways. No, you can't. But see, that's all they are is double standards. So, I mean, you know what? I'm, I'm just so tired of the fluff. I'm so tired of the smoke and mirrors. America needs better than this. And we both have said that even when Biden was in, we were like, oh, Lord, here we are. We know that he's done good things. But once again, we were like, hmm. Hey, we got to go with what we got to go. Now we have someone who is completely viable, completely smart, completely knows what she's doing, and we're still fighting smoke screens. I'm tired. I'm tired of this. She has an agenda. She has the smart. She's not afraid to go to toe to toe with Trump. And it's so very clear. But yet, like I've always said, you're never, ever going to change the MAGA Kool Aid drinkers. You're never going to. So it's the people that we need to get that are undecided or independent and on the fence about whatever they're going to do. Those are the people we need to make sure that we get to. And we need to make sure that people understand they still need to vote because your non-vote still is saying something. So it doesn't matter what we say about MAGA. It doesn't matter what Trump is saying because he's not saying anything. Nothing. He's repeating the same old script. So her platform is way beyond anything he's ever thought about right. because he's only thought about him and how this status can serve him. Period. All right. So I'm just going to uh, comments first. Fitness IQ Cantos. Ooh, I like talking about the 30 second promo. Dr. Tati says, that's a great promo. Well, those two ladies make it happen. I just I just do some stuff with a, a gentleman in the background. Regina says, I think the states are are all in charge the, of the price gouging laws, but that needs to change. Regina also goes, her campaign is two weeks old. He's been running since he left office, still with no platform. Regina also says, glad Biden is going to be praising her at the convention. I wish the Clintons weren't speaking at the DNC. So over that chapter. All right. Yeah, I am too. Unfortunately, Kamala doesn't have that doesn't have um, that leverage over the DNC. The DNC is is they operate as their own. So that would be Jamie Harris. That would be the person to blame for that for the Clintons. I think the price get like Regina says the price gouging laws are in the states, but um, they've got to you've got to have certain. Um, there are certain laws that I think that she actually can get done that um, because remember the state, the states have their own laws until the federal government puts forth a law. And right. then, the, and then the federal government law trumps whatever the state laws are. So the states have to follow the federal government. And so if it's an, they, they might be able to set a baseline law and then states can adopt. Um, how they're go how they're going to um, enforce it locally or what they'll allow locally, but you know you got to remember too a lot of these businesses 
do business on federal land. Yeah. They're, they, they, they might supply goods and services to the federal government um, for different um, functions and things or get called to do state dinners to supply things for state dinners or they have government contracts with um, educational institutions or um, government contracts with, like, with NASA, the Pentagon, any of these, um, any of the federal courthouses where they have a cafeteria or whatever. So she can affect their state contracts and that's the negotiating tool is that, hey, look, you might not get this if you don't lower these prices elsewhere or across the board. And the thing that they like is getting their federal money because that's guaranteed. Consumer money, it depends on the consumer. That that's, that's less reliable than the federal money. Mm. All right. I'm going to also put up, there's an article here. You know, here's what a parish presidency could look like. Um, there's some different things and basically saying the vice president's platform would likely be the same vein of that of President Joe Biden, whom she supported for years. But Harris expected to put her own stamp on style on matters ranging from abortion to economy to immigration. Also, she'll have to walk a fine line of taking credit for the administration's accomplishments while not being jointly blamed by its wo voters by its shortcomings. Uh, we, you know, there's things here on abortion. Economy, high prices are a top concern for many more many voters. I actually read that article in depth, um, preparing for this show. And yeah. it's like it's why when I was talking earlier, I actually didn't reference it because when you get down to it and you read it, it's what they speculate. Yeah. It's what CNN speculates will be her positions on things. Instead, mm -hmm. I just went right to what what Kamala Harris said herself. Those are her positions. Those are the things that she's going to stand on. And well, will she be able to stand on the um, on the Biden administration? Absolutely, because Joe Biden's going to make that happen. But I, in reading that article, I realized more and more I have so I have even less respect for CNN as a news organization than I did uh, two weeks ago. Okay. Regina has a question for you, Aisha. Aisha, is Harris going to put Biden's scortis reform on her platform? I think, that Joe, I think that Joe Biden's actually going to try and get that done before he leaves. Before he leaves. But he's because he's pushing forward fast with he this. He is. Yeah. I think that's I think that I think he's going to try and get that done before he leaves. If not, he's going to set her up to the only thing that she needs is a vote in both chambers of the House with the majority. Okay. Regina says CNN blows. Oh gosh. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right. Okay. Let's move to another conversation piece. Project 2025 update. What's going on with it? Yeah, ladies. Don't fall for the hype. They trying to make it look like they are falling apart. They are not falling apart. They are still planning on implementing this thing. Don't lose your focus. They don't. They see that Trump doesn't want to try to distance himself from it, but they are still moving forward. Don't fall for the hype. Don't do it. And here's the thing: the guy that stepped down, he stepped down from doing the act. They're doing from doing active policy. Now, here's the thing: they haven't been doing any active policy. Um, right now because they're not in control but basically this guy stepped down because they don't have to write anything else they don't have to publish anything nope. else and if you think that if you think that they're off it they aren't when the leader of the heritage foundation has jd vance writing the forward to his book about project 2025 jd vance who is the Republican v VP. So clearly he had to get permission for Donald Trump to do this, okay? So they are doing, they are continuing in Project 2025, in Project 2025. What does this mean, this guy, this director stepping down? It means that they're no longer doing the, um, coming up with the policy. Now well, they're in the implementation, right? right? They're in the implementation phase. Okay, which they've already started. I'm so which sick. They already of started. Saying, which they already started. I've had three people tell me this week that oh no, they'll never be able to implement this. BS. 
They already have implemented this stuff in Texas, Florida, Alabama, all those southern states. They've already started implementing this. Don't you dare think that they cannot. The whole role is the first 180 days. They've already well, that's, started. That's all it is. That's all Project 2025 is the first 180 days. That is the whole thrust of it. It's not going past there. And and for example, there are there are block cases in the way, like for example, in Florida, um, the court said that um, the Stop Woke Act is permanently shelved, is permanently done. They can, Ron DeSantis cannot do it. And so this makes them, this makes them angry, right? But it's just like, Georgia taking away the federal funding for AP history. Those are things that they're trying to do. But people, anyone says to you, oh, they can't do this. They're not going to be able to do this. They did it already. In they Project 2025, the foundation of this whole thing is to expand the powers of the executive branch. That is the overarching goal, to expand the powers of the executive branch. Well, what did Trump have in his executive orders each year of his presidency? And this is why I encourage you to go read his executive orders and, and sit side by side with Project 2025. His first, that executive order, it's buried, it's like probably 11 or 12 down, but it it, it is very important. He had an executive order to expand the powers of the executive branch. I, so should, I have broken this down for you so easy. You must do your research. If you don't want to do all that research, then go back to the, and watch the replay where we broke all of this down. I am so passionate about this daggone Project 2025 because this is beyond dangerous. This is beyond danger, Will Robinson, danger. Y'all need to understand that they have this all planned out and it's done. They're just waiting for the right people to get in. And here's the thing too. If you, if you want to know what Project 2025 looks like and you don't want to read all 900 pages, Go back and read his executive orders for the four years he was there. It's not very, they're not very long. They don't, they're, they're basically self-explainable when you read the name of the order. It doesn't go into detail, it just tells you what the order does. Um, read them and you'll be like, wait a second, this is Project 2025 because guess what it is? The only difference is the reason that we didn't see those things the way that we thought we would is because there were people there that um, there are people there that prevented him from being his worst self, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But he doesn't plan on having any of those people around this go around. Nope. So go back and read those executive orders of his and imagine what it would look like if there are no guardrails, if there's no one there to stop him and tell him these things are illegal. You'll be like, oh my God. Because guess what? The first one of the first things he's gonna do is child separation. He's gonna go back to that. Yeah. Because because remember, with him, the cruelty is the point. So all of the mean spirited things that he thought he was right on, those go back into place. The yep, second thing we'll probably do on day one is issue a, is tell the FBI to issue arrest warrants for all the people that he hates. Yeah. All the people that he thought did something to him basically held him accountable for stuff that he did. But yeah, all those people, it's going to be Harris, it's going to be Biden, it's going to be Doug Emhoff, it's going to be Jill Biden, it's going to be Hunter Biden. It's going to be all the Biden grandchildren, whether the ones we know or not. It's going to be um, everyone who worked in the Biden administration. It's going to be Pete Buttigieg. It's, it's going to be everybody. Nancy then Pelosi. Be, yeah, Nancy then he's going to get to Congress. It's going to be Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer. It's going to be every Democrat. Then it's going to be the Obamas because God forbid, you know, Barack Obama made people laugh at me. It's going to be Obama. It's going to be him and the kids and, and Michelle. And then he's going to go after, look, if Jimmy Carter survives that long, he might even have Jimmy Carter arrested. Okay. Which, by the way, his grandson said that he's he's trying to hold out so he can vote for Kamala. <laughs> I 
love that. His grandson said Carter is really trying to hold out so he can vote for Kamala. Well, look, he held out. Look, he held out for Kissinger to die. So, yeah, and he's ninety nine, y'all. He's ninety nine. Yeah, Jimmy, yeah. President Jimmy Carter. Dr. Tachi says they want us to lose focus. Yeah. Yes. And Regina says, exactly. If you look at the demographics of Texas, it should be a blue state. No wonder it is the capital of MAGA skullduggery. Oh, yeah. If you look at the plate, if you look at all the places that have seen an uptick in their populations of minorities, those are the ones where the that will be the birthplaces of Project 2025 in 2025 if Donald Trump wins. That will yeah. be where he starts. Yeah. That will be where he starts. Because he wants to go to the places where he can inflict the most pain. Okay. Well, before we do our last conversation piece, we're going to go for another quick break and then we're going to talk about the hostage release that happened at the end of this week so hold it tight we'll be back in 30 seconds primetime saturday with aisha and lala join aisha case daggers and laura lala key as they cut through the chaos and make some sense of the nonsense in american news and politics but you still got to give him the respect that he has been doing this a long time Sharp insights, bold opinions, and a touch of humor. It's the show that keeps you informed and entertained. Nobody's talking about that. Aisha, that's pretty powerful. Don't miss Primetime Saturday with Aisha and Lala. Tune in and stay ahead of the headlines. All right, so family, what do you think about the promos we're dropping on you? We'd love to get your feedback. But yeah, dropping new promos, dropping new promos, always keeping it fresh, keeping it fresh. All right. Last conversation piece, three Americans who were freed in a prisoner swap deal with Russia, including Wall Street journalist Evan Gershowitz. I hope I got that right. Ed, not my heart if I didn't get it right. What impact will this have on the U.S. presidential election? Well, they're trying to suppress it, if you ask me. A lot of people are not talking about it, but this is a big thing, and this is a big deal. And, and, and I love how the media is picking and choosing things they want to. And it just clearly shows a lot of the media that whose side they're on, what mm -hmm. uh, gets reported. But I don't want to overshadow the hard work that all that went into this, and that these people are home. Yeah, you know, when Brittany Griner was brought home, everyone kept saying, particularly people on the right, "Well, why not? What about Paul Whelan? He he, he forgot about Paul Whelan. He forgot. Apparently, he did not. And this has been remember, this has been." going on this negotiation has probably been going on for about a year okay yeah um yeah and it involved not just us but it involved us reaching out to our allies and saying hey we need your help on this and we can help you on this let's do this big package together because those were the ones that were just released back to the u.s right mm -hmm. that we know about but there were others that went back to places like Germany and other places that were captured in Russia. So there's that. But the other thing too that them off, especially on the right, is that Putin went along with it. Yeah. Putin Aisha, listen, I need to pick your brain on that, sis. Because you, you got the one who told me about this yesterday because I was well, yeah. I, I, I stepped off. Wow. Yeah, because you know, I told you why Putin did this. Because Putin's not dumb. Putin is mean, like Trump, but he's not stupid. His people might only see the media that he allows them to, but you can best believe in his Russian castle, he's watching news from over the world, and he sees that enthusiasm behind Kamala Harris. He saw the fact that she raised $330 million in less than two weeks, okay? Crazy. Less than two weeks. Crazy. She raised she raised more money in less than two weeks of the last month than Trump ran one than he raised all month, like out like more than twice of what he made, right? So he sees that he sees how people are responding to her. He realizes that he see and he also sees the polls 
Trump's like, I'm winning bigly in all the polls. I'm like, first of all, your people need to start showing you actual polls and stop making up their own because, and I, you know how little credit I give to polls, but that margin, y'all are just one percentage point away, whether it's her up by one or, or her down by one. It's not the same. The, the, they, I need them to stop showing him the Biden polls and writing out Biden's name and typing in Kamala's name and saying it's this and say here's the poll. Okay. <laughs> because um it, it it's that close. And Putin can see the writing on the wall. He's like, um, I'm gonna have to make nice if yeah. I'm gonna have to deal with her. Okay, because guess who else has never dealt with a black woman in power? No, you got that right. Vladimir Putin. That's and guess right. who else is just as scared as this black man, woman with power? Vladimir Putin. Because you know what? What's the what's the saying from um Brand Nubian? Punks jumped up to get down to get beat down. Basically. Oh, I love it. I, I'm just glad they're home. Anytime that we can get our people home, it's always a wonderful time to celebrate. Yeah, I think it's I think it's great. It's a good look for us. I'm happy for those people. Um, it shows, it also shows too, hey, wait a second. Um, this would never have been possible either if NATO, and if we didn't have NATO, because these are our NATO partners. But you know what I loved even more? Was Joe Biden's victory lap when he did his speech at the White House and he was talking about this, right? And um, they said to him, um, well, you know, Donald Trump said that he could get following home without having to 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 give up anything. He's like, um, well, he didn't do it, did he? Right. There was that. And then I love the other one when he said, well, are you going to have a conversation with Putin? And he said, I don't need to talk to Putin. <laughs> I don't need to talk to him. Like Joe Biden, look, Joe Biden, Joe Biden is, is my favorite, is one of my favorite kinds of presidents. Um, a lame duck president because lame duck presidents they don't care about anything <laughs> okay <laughs> they I don't care that. about anything I don't need that. not only that but he's acting like i'm out i'm out of this in uh a few months but it's kind of like he's like he's that person at your job that's six months away from retiring yes <laughs> And everything rolls down the so, road. So, so they say everything that they've been holding in for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I That's love it. Yeah. All right. So, Dr. Tashi says this is fantastic news. And Regina says either Putin anticipates a Harris win or is he appearing to support her while plotting to interfere on the. November fifth for forty five. I don't think that he. I don't think that he's plotting, um, or he's a. I, first of all, he's not appearing to support her. That that's he's not supporting her. Period. Sure. Um, is he plotting to interfere on November fifth? He's there. There's already Russian interference. It's yeah. it's it's the misinformation. Um, but um, is he going to? do this for um, that. The problem is that the fact that he made this um, concession tells me that this is the kind of excitement and um, energy that even if he tries to interfere, he can't stop. And he, know, and he knows that it will have minimal effect because remember, Putin targets people specifically who will likely vote for Democrats. The people that he doesn't target are the are never Trumpers. They're those people. They're the independents. He never never targets them. So that is that's the writing on the wall. I think that um, also too. You got to remember, Putin interfering in tr or trying to interfere in U.S. elections isn't something that just start started with when he um, did it with Donald Trump. He also tried during the Obama elections. And I think what Putin is seeing 
is a repeat of 2008 when they tried it with the Obama elections and that that um, that enthusiasm and support and, and the excitement from voters was not something that they could contain through any of their tactics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think this is really him. I think more than anything, this is pr pretty much like a surrender. Like um, I'm going to have to be good for four years. We'll see. We'll see. Dr. Tachi says. You don't surprise yes. me anymore, though. Yeah. Huh? So still, there's still a long way to go. There's I, still think there's still, I think there's still a long way to go. But honestly, being here and being on the ground and seeing this like firsthand everywhere, um, we'll see. I think she's. I think she's going to win. I don't. I don't put it this way. I don't see Trump winning when even his own people who watch. For example, I was in the doctor's offices. The doctor's office yesterday. Doctor's offices are notorious for playing Fox News. So you end up sitting around a lot of people that listen to Fox News and watch Fox News when they're not at the doctor's office. That's why doctor's offices play Fox News. They don't have NBC. They don't have MSNBC. They don't have CNN. Just Fox News. And I'm sitting there, and they were showing, they were showing something that he said, and I heard people. I just the way the people their body language about when he said the racist things made them very uncomfortable. And I got to say this, because you have to remember, with Barack Obama, we said the same thing too. Everybody said the same thing too, that a black man will never become president. And we were all dead, dead wrong, because he slaughtered John McCain in, in the Electoral College, did the same thing for Mitt Romney. But also too, some of the votes that he did get were from people who did not like being considered or counted in that racist faction, even though they might have some racist beliefs. It's one thing to be racist internally. It's another thing that you don't want people to call you and you don't want the stigma attached to it. And right now, people are seeing that play out with him. The thing is that because Trump's not going to change his playbook from any of his elections, and now this one is being um, written this way. You have to remember, too, that Barack Obama didn't run against Donald Trump. Donald Trump wanted to run against Barack Obama, but he didn't. He couldn't. But here he is, and he's able to run against Kamala Harris. He's running against Kamala Harris like she was Barack Obama. And he's going to, and we're, yeah, it's early. We're just getting started, but everything he's going to throw out at her is going to be everything that he's thrown out at Barack Obama in the last 15 years, especially after the DNC and after Obama speaks in her favor. Then he's going to paint her with the Obama brush and that will be his downfall because for you to forget, Barack Obama is still the most, the most beloved president in United States history, still. Well. All I, I just say from where I'm sitting here, I think that I don't know how much more 45's base can expand, but I do think Kamala Harris has a big opportunity to expand her reach more yes. than 45. I think that that's going to be her big challenge because probably a lot of people who weren't thinking about voting or were thinking, you know, I'm not going to vote because Biden's running. Now that's her chance to seize the moment. And that's why well, all these I've heard a lot of people that I know that has actually said that that they yeah. were they really were not going to vote. They, when that when it all changed and they weren't saying anything to anybody because they don't want to hear the same schnick that everybody tells them. You gotta vote. They didn't want to go through that. But now that she has come out and she's very clearly our choice, uh, many of them and I know I've heard at least six or seven people in my circle that said. Yeah, I'm ready now. I will. Well, so there's to me, and again, I'm in the middle here. I think Ms. Harris has three key points going forward who she picks as VP, her DNC speech, and if she debates 45. If she can come strong with those same three areas, I think she has a good chance. And see, I disagree. Well, she's going to show up to the debate whether Trump shows up or not. Yeah, she's going to. Right. See, not I on her. He's not going to debate her. Right, because see, I disagree on that because you have to remember, we don't do majorities here, Dr. Vaughn. I know that. 
We do electoral that. college. So I, the, ma- the I, way that you have to look at how she wins is through the electoral map. She yes, just she put she put North Carolina back in play. So even if she loses a state like Michigan, North Carolina being back in play um, buffers that. There, she's got other opportunities. I think to she's got put it this way. She's got more avenues to two seventy than Trump has. And that is really the key here in terms of who can and can't win. Because, for, for example, the um, the guy who's about to be the attorney, the guy, the black guy who's running for governor of um, of North Carolina, mm-hmm. all the talking that he's been doing about women and how horrible women are, and how women, you know, women who have abortions should be murdered, et cetera, et cetera. Well, guess what? He had to admit yesterday his wife had an abortion. So the, 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 every, the house of cards is falling down. But again, it's also about who she picks as her VP. She wins the state. So Arizona, if she goes, if she can, if she can flip North Carolina and Arizona, the possibility that she might lose um, Michigan or Wisconsin is okay. Okay. So she's got more. I think the reason I think I'm probably more hopeful about her winning. And I see I didn't understand this during the Obama administration when I was like, when I at first thought during that whole thing that he possibly couldn't win because I was thinking about Americans' attitudes. Americans' attitudes are one thing taken to effect, but that electoral college map and that math is a whole different thing. And I think that um, the more options that she has to get to 270 and the fewer that he has, put it this way, he only has one one route there. And that's by winning all the swing states. So it's by winning Pennsylvania, Michigan, Michigan Wisconsin, Michigan. and, and um, uh, oh God, what was the other one? Nevada. Okay. But... Remember, Georgia was purple. Um, and remember, Joe Biden won Georgia. So there are other routes, I think, that she has to go to win that he doesn't. So her possibility, her likelihood of winning, I think, is larger. All right. Last comment from the audience on this live conversation. Dr. Jack says, the GOP's house is built on sand and fog, so it's about to... S- Oh, all you have to wait. All you have to wait for. She. I like. I like the fact that she said on sand, because basically all you have to wait for is one wave. Okay. You know we talk right. about the blue wave. All you got to do is wait for one wave to come in and destroy the sand castle. All right, we are done. Another epic conversation. Prime time Saturday with Ishan Lala. As always, want to thank the ladies for showing up and showing strong. They always show up and they always show strong. So Lala. You make it easy. How do you do it? I put it all in one spot for y'all. But I want to ask y'all a favor this week. I, too, am also trying to grow my YouTube channel. So in this this link here, bit.ly backslash Laura Key Info, if you could please make sure that you go and show some love to my YouTube channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, subscribe and then hit the notification button. Aisha K. Staggers. Um, yeah, there you can find me on, well, you'll find me on Twitter, hopefully tomorrow, because you know, I'm still on suspension. Today's my last day in Instagram. So, all right, good stuff. And myself, here are all the crazy places. I have never been banned on any of these platforms. I don't know what, I, I guess someone likes me still in those, in the, in the, what is it? The digital sphere. The digital world, but website the d r v i b e s h o w dot com. Also, YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, the Doctor Vibe Show. Instagram at the d r v i b e s h o w. X slash Twitter at d r v i b e s h o w, and email d r period at d r period v i b e at the d r v i b e s h o w dot com. That's it. And as always, we want to make sure we close everything off. There is the link where you can catch the Patreon broadcast. Aisha, Lala, and this week, Jill Jones. There you go. 
Three Amigos will be back. Five Time Saturday Store. There is the link there. Also, you want to join the Discord group? I highly recommend you join the Discord group, especially with what's going to happen in the next few months, American political-wise. It's going to be fire like it always is. Subscribe to the Dr. Vibe Show on YouTube. Hit the notification button. Hit it. Get to 1,600. So Lala's first, then mine. And then like the Dr. Vibe Show on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And then finally, if you want to advertise your business, product, or service on any of the platforms I'm a part of, DR period, V-I-B-E at the DR, V-I-B-E, S-H-O-W.com. So this is how we close it out. Live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get smaller to get stronger. Block assumptions, then aim bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Love, faith, and respect. Don't just manage your time, manage your energy, and keep fighting. God bless. Peace well. Keep the faith. Walk good, and we'll chat soon.